The left-hand side of the Jets' offensive line struggled mightily in Week 1. Lakin Tomlinson and George Fant combined to allow 12 pressures against the Baltimore Ravens' middling defensive line. So what happens when they take on Miles Garrett in Cleveland next week? Let's take a look at the All-22 together and I'll show you why Fant and Tomlinson struggled in Week 1. What's going on everybody? It's Luke here from Play Like a Jet and today, not such a positive video. We're looking at Tomlinson and Fant, the left-hand side of the Jets' line and exactly how much they struggled against the Baltimore Ravens. I mentioned it in the intro, Tomlinson allowed eight pressures, Fant allowed four pressures, a sack, and also a penalty on a holding call in the running game. But let's break down exactly the mistakes they were making and some of the tendencies we saw on the film. Let's start with Lakin Tomlinson. He really struggled against the bull rush, and Baltimore's interior gave him fits throughout the entirety of the game. So he's going to be in the left guard spot, the right-hand side of your screen here, taking on number 92. And what I think the issue is, I'll let you play it at full speed, is that he overpass sets to the outside, and then he gets beaten through his chest. As we freeze it right here, you can see exactly how far he pass sets to his left-hand side. He's nearly standing on George Fant's foot. By the time he tries to correct that, you can see his right leg steps backwards. As he gets bull rushed, he has a foot in the air, momentum going backwards, and just gets absolutely carried into Joe Flacco's lap. Ends up being a throwaway, can't make the check down, and it's an incomplete pass. But again, one more time, you see him overpass set, opens up his chest, momentum in a bad spot, and he gets beaten very, very easily. The next two reps of Lake and Tomlinson getting beaten actually look very, very similar, and this was a little bit concerning to me. Again, you're gonna see him at the left guard spot, Again, he's getting beaten with the bull rush, but there's something that becomes a bit of a trend here when you break down the film. On this occasion, you can see number 58 taking on Tomlinson gets his left hand tight to the chest and forces Tomlinson's right hand out towards the number five on his back. The tight man wins when you get in the trenches. Tomlinson gets beaten to his chest very, very easily. As a result, he's able to then control the bull rush with that left arm, long arm, and then he replaces it with the right arm and then allows himself to swim towards the quarterback in Joe Flacco. He gets a pressure, a slight QB hit, but can't influence the play completely. Garrett Wilson with an incredible job, nearly getting the first down. But again, watch it one more time. Opening up the chest, wide hands, and then not being able to control the point of attack, and then the ability to let the defensive lineman replace that right hand and then get to the quarterback. I don't love that. He really struggled with these bull rushes and containing people going through his chest. This time, we go back to number 92, who killed him all game, to be honest. He had three or four of the pressures against Lake and Tomlinson. You see a very similar thing. This time, Tomlinson tries to shoot his hands early. He doesn't want to get beaten in the chest. What does the defensive tackle do? He swipes the hand with his left arm and then replaces with a long arm inside right arm gets to the chest and once again walks him back into Joe Flacco, this time flushes him out and Max Mitchell's man ends up forcing the ball out and it's an intentional grounding. But once again, you just see him not quite sure what to do with his hands, how to control the chest, how to get tight, this time shoots a little early, nice job with the swipe with the left arm from the defensive lineman, again replacing with that long right inside arm, opening him up, forcing that head and body weight back and affecting it may as well be a sack because an intentional grounding had the exact same result. So what about George Fant, you asked? Did he fare a little bit better? He had a mixed bag. I think George Fant, on reflection and watching the tape, wasn't as bad as I originally thought, but he still got beaten a few times, just stone cold, and had easy hits on Joe Flacco. Left-hand side of your screen, number 76, Justin Houston, just goes straight through the middle and forces a very easy sack. George Fan doesn't actually do a ton wrong here. He travels pretty well. He's in a good position. His body height is fine. Again, he has slightly wide hands. You can see his left hand ends up on the outside. He loses control and he isn't able to get tight. Houston then controls the chest. He controls the rep, as I always say, throws him to the outside on a little push-pull and he's able to get to Joe Flacco. It's not an egregious mistake, but he gets there very quickly within two and a half seconds. He just doesn't do enough to uh, control the chest, to put up a fight, to stonewall. And in the end, it's a really easy play for Justin Houston. This one I have more of an issue with. Uh, he's on the right-hand side of your screen, again, the left tackle spot. 
Again, going against Justin Houston. This time, there's an overpass set from George Fan. I think he gets out of his stance too far. He opens up his inside hip, and Justin Houston just says thank you very much and takes it. This is far too easy for one of the premier pass rushers in the game, even at his age. George Fant does a nice job getting out of his stance. Again, covers really good ground. It's this extra little step here that I have an issue with. I think he's covered the ground he needs to. He's not reading and reacting to Justin Houston. Houston, though, he sees George Fant still sliding out. He opens up the inside hip. Look at that gap between left tackle and left guard. He exploits that space. A really nice job swiping the hands viciously. Gets them both out of the way with a two-hand swipe and then swallows up Joe Flacco. It ends up being an incompletion, but again... This is very lucky to me, not a sack. George Fant, too wide on his pass set, opens up the inside hip, and it's just not a very good job. Unfortunately, there were other aspects of George Fant's game that I didn't like as well. You look at what he did on some of the quick screens and getting out in space. This is his game. He's a 300-pound tackle. you got to stick this block. This could have been a much bigger play for Garrett Wilson if George Fant had calmed his feet at the point of attack and made his block. He travels really well in space. You can see it. He has eyes on his man, the safety, number 36, but he doesn't slow down his feet and look where he ends up. Look, I understand this is a, you know, 190-pound guy against 300 pounds out on the edge. It's difficult to control that change of direction. I think he doesn't take the best route, and as a result, he whiffs. Garrett Wilson has to cut back inside, away from his blockers, and ends up being tackled. I think he could have done a much better job in space there, and I wish that he was improved because this is really where you want to see George Fant thrive. This is his game. Wide zone, leading, screens, those kind of plays are really where he should be strong. And he also had a holding penalty in the run game as well. This is something I touched on in my preview for George Fant coming into the season. In the quick pass sets and some of the front side run blocking, I think he has a habit of getting his body weight too far to the outside and not being balanced at the point of attack. Perfect example of this. Whether this is a quick pass set or a running play, in this as, in this instance, they end up running the football. George Fant just does not have control. His head is far too in front of his feet. He's off balance. He's out of control. He's outside of the frame of his left knee. And as a result, he gets thrown to the outside, a swim over the top, and he gets called for the holding penalty. It's a very clear hold. I just think this is a continual issue for George Fant, and this is something that frustrated me a little bit. But I'll be fair to George Fant. He actually had some really nice reps, especially in pass protection as well. That's why he graded out significantly better than Tomlinson, according to PFF. He was in the low 60s. Something I really liked that was a bit of a trend as well was his understanding of when to punch or have that first strike against the defensive ends when they were using Euro step footwork or going for a cross chop type move. Here's an example against Adafe Owe, the second year player for the Ravens. George Fant's on the right hand side of your screen. First of all, does a great job traveling. I think he's so smooth out of his stance, covers ground extremely well. But look at the patience of this punch. He waits for Owe to have to go to the outside with this little Euro step footwork. Wait till he does a little stutter step, plants the left foot, and Fant goes, I'm going to strike. Look at the force behind that, the impact he has. He shoots the shoulders and head of Owe up, does a great job getting him off balance, catching him whilst implementing that Euro step footwork, and then maintains his footwork across and around the corner and keeps connected with his hands, does a great job moving his feet through the block, and that's just a win. We'll watch it at full speed, smooth out of his stance, great aggressive punch, and then maintains the spacing with that arm, the right hand punch, fantastic from George Fant. And the last one, another example of what I just talked about. Again, against 99 Oway, smooth out of his stance. What I like again is the timing, understanding of the pass rush plan of the defensive lineman. Look at Oway. He goes for a cross chop. You can see left arm goes up to swipe down George Fant's hands. He tries to skip to the outside. It's not a great uh, utilization of footwork, but George Fant understands and recognizes this. And then when he's in the air, that's when you strike. He punches at the perfect time and he forces Oway to the ground. In the end, he gets tangled up and fall, falls as well. It's not the most graceful, but this is a really nice rep. The understanding of what the pass rusher is trying to do uh, so it's great awareness, ID, timing of the punch, and make sure you pancake him. That was much better from Fant. So that was the story of the left side of the Jets' offensive line in week one against the Ravens. They struggled. There's no qualms or doubts about it. And it's going to be a tough test against Miles Garrett. Can they respond in Cleveland this week? Let's find out. Joe Flacco is really hoping they do.